Hello and welcome to the Box Populi. My name is Amanda Polk and this is a segment where I get a bunch of folks to play a game I'm really excited about and get their first impressions. Today's game is Golem, a one to four player game from Cranio Games. So let's get started by hearing how folks would describe this game in one word. Tracks. Complicated. Multifaceted. Crunchy. Focus. Mystical. So before we get any deeper into this review, let's look at how this game works and just do a quick light overview of how to play Golem. So you can see here there's three main boards in this game. First there's your individual player board where you have three different areas to build. Uh, the artifacts, the bookshelf, and the golem themselves. Uh, each one of those areas there are four things you can do. You can complete four artifacts, you have four shelves you can put a book on, and there are four golem you can build and add to the board. And in each one of these areas there are six upgrades possible that will give you in-game bonuses and will give you point multipliers for the end of the game. Then there's the big board where you move your golem and your students on three different tracks that correspond to the three areas on your individual board. There's the red track for the golem, the yellow track for the artifacts, and the blue track for the books. And then finally, there is the synagogue board where there's the marble track, which determines your options on each round. So you have the marble track, you get to do two marble actions each round. Um, and then you also get to do one rabbi action and there's these tiles over here where you will place your rabbi and take the corresponding action. Easy, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a fairly complicated game uh, with a lot going on. None of the individual bits is too hard to get, but it's just a lot of bits. Uh, so let's hear what people thought about learning to play Golem. Uh, overall, I love the game. Um, I think there's only so many of this depth of game you can hold uh, in your mental lexicon at the same time, but this one I thought was worth it. It's a, it's a fun game. I'd play it again. Um, it, it, you know, there are several games that you can play like a single time and kind of grasp, but, but I think this one will take a couple, couple, couple plays before I can really settle in on a strategy. I really want to go back and read the rule book and I really want to play it again. Um, it's a fun, crunchy, you know, like mid to heavyweight Euro, that, which, is, which is what I like. I don't think I fully understood the whole game. I think I still missed some things. So it was, it was fun to just jump in, but maybe 5% of me is 2% uh, unsatisfied because I wish I maybe fully had understood more, would have made different decisions, but that also makes me want to play again because I want to take all the actions. And there was a theme um, about focusing in on just one portion or like a section of the game when playing it, especially the first time. It's a heavy game, has a lot of moving pieces. Um, we're able to specialize in different, in different ways, but especially only playing it the first time through, you're not quite sure where to go. And it, you know, being a Euro, I was like, I'm just going to forget entirely about one section, not, fo not focus on it because so go Euros. The end scoring cards, these things, um, it gave me like a goal to focus on or else, because it was my first time playing the game, I really didn't have like a strategy going in. So those gave me like, oh, I have to get six books. And then I got six books. And that allowed me to focus what I was doing, my strategy, and what part of the game to focus on. There are so many different ways to approach it, so you can't I feel like I could play it again and have a totally different game. When you start seeing uh, that you're building one track well, and you've got the resources to do that, that feels really good to do that. I also like all the different tracks. It's cool how you can like focus on one, but like each time you play through, you could be like, okay, let's just do the Golem one this time, but it's also influenced by the roles and things so it really can be a very unique game every time there was a good ease of entry into it because you really only needed to know two-thirds of the game to play pretty well your first time and because there's three main tracks and if you do well on two of the three you can do pretty well and learn the third as you're playing it 
So that way, the next time you play it, you can focus on a whole other part of the game that you didn't get to experience before. So I'm looking forward to the, uh, the second playing of the game as well. For a Euro game, it doesn't have a lot of like beautiful table presence, but there's this one piece that everyone notices when you set it up on a table, and that is the marble track, the, the synagogue where the marbles come out. This is mostly just a randomizer and sorting tool, an automated sorting and randomizing tool. It doesn't play that much into the game. I think people will look at it and think, ooh, is this like Potion Explosion or Gizmos? And it is not. Uh, you just pick up two different marbles at different times, and that's about it. But uh, people had varying feelings about the, the marble track itself. I'm still not sure about that, how the marbles come out. I wonder if time is going to wear on that mechanism, or is that box always going to work as well as it does, or I wonder if there's some way for the marbles to be distributed and flow in more evenly, maybe, but your Zen approach is perfect. The marbles seem like an attempt to be cutesy to try something different when it could just be a die roll. I actually like the marble feature, which I think is an unpopular opinion, but it's kind of like... I like the, they shuffle it every time, and I thought it was kind of fun matching the colors, even though I never used them. But <laughs> uh, it was an interesting component, but gimmicky, but kind of different at least. There are five pages in this rule book at the back, the appendices, uh, or the appendix, I guess. There's just one of them, and it's got five pages with all of the different tiles and things sort of defined. It's a, it's a wonderful glossary and very useful. I actually found that every, especially for new players, it was just, con this was constantly getting passed around the table. Each player, it seemed like, needed to reference two or three things on their turn to be able to um, get through the game. Um, part of that is because I think the iconography is a little clunky, um, but also it didn't come with a player aid. So there was a lot that was in here that I thought like a set of player aids could have really helped the game uh, be easier to pick up um, and to get through without having to be constantly passing the rule book around. As it is, I'm probably gonna make some color copies and laminate some extra copies of the rule book because uh, I don't know how long it's gonna make it with such heavy use. All of the, um, the symbols, um, I think I had a hard hard time with of thinking about um, what they all mean. We kept checking a lot for that. There's a lot of iconography that takes a while to get used to. And so there's a lot of double checking and like, oh, is this do what I think it does? And make sure you understand what, what you're doing um, when you're doing it. Like the rabbi tokens are always going to be complicated, I think, because they don't clearly make sense there. Um, you have to constantly remember what you're doing and what each thing means. And that didn't leave time to like really engage with the other players. Like I felt like I was very much doing my own game. We weren't really competing until we scored points at the end. So yeah, Meiji's right. This game is very much a, a multiplayer solo game. Your interaction with other players is limited at best. And every game I've played, I've found I need to focus in a lot on just what I'm doing and how am I um, building towards some kind of, hopefully, victory. Um, but the irony to me is that there is a solo mode in this game, and I tried it, and for me, it did not work well. Um, it's You're essentially playing this game two-handed, and for a game that's already kind of got a lot going on and you have to be thinking about a lot and tracking a lot of things just in your own individual world, uh, trying to play that essentially two-handed, even with like a, an automa and some things that helped sort of determine what the other player was doing, I... I ended up just abandoning the second player uh, because I was enjoying playing my game. What I was not enjoying was playing the Automa's game for it. And so like two thirds of the way through, I was just like, whatever, I'm leaving that behind. I'm just going to see where I end up with my own thing here. Uh, so I can't recommend the solo version of this game, but I do love it as a multiplayer solo.
So this wasn't a game that people felt felt like they immediately sort of like clicked with and were able to really develop their strategy. And a lot of people referenced like, well, you know, maybe next time when I play it, it's going to feel better. So I actually got a couple of folks that I uh, already had talking about their first play to play again and then checked in to see how they felt about the experience the second time around. Yeah, I did understand it better on the, the second go through, so it was a little um, a little more fun for me, and I got to work a strategy a little bit better. But, but now I just want to play it a third time, so I feel like I really got it. What I liked uh, a lot about the game, especially after the second play, is the variability in the golem actions, um, and the fact that it's a very little luck game. I like games where it's just kind of pure, like you, you have to uh, form your strategy at the beginning of the game, um, which is kind of a brain burner, you know, that's a good and a bad thing, right? But this is a kind of brain burner game, so I'm okay with that. Um, that was something I really liked. Something that I had an issue with, and I need to, this is on my second time playing, but uh, the first time I played, I went for the Gollum strategy, the Red Track strategy, combined with the blue book strategy. And I did a lot better than I did this round. And I tried to go for the um, coin gold little engine side, the yellow side of the board this time. And maybe I just didn't do it well, but uh, it felt like a, a lot weaker track as compared to the, the blue track. I don't think it's possible to just do the teach for this game in less than 20 minutes. And the setup is a beast. In fact, I don't know how I, I don't have a large enough table in my life to play this as like a, a four player game where there's one person on each side of the board because your personal board takes up so much space. And then there's the big board in the middle and then the person on the other side of you has another personal board. I think you'd have to have a table that's like five feet across to make that work. Um, I've done a bunch of three player games where you put one person on the end of the table and then two people sitting next to each other and that works pretty well for space. but you know, in my normal size table life, uh, it's been tight. Uh, so that's kind of a limitation of it. And it just takes a, a long time to set up. I think probably the setup adds another good 10 minutes to the getting started. So it's sort of like 30 minutes from shelf to play, uh, which is an investment. Um, and then... I upgraded a lot of the stuff in this game. I think it's a great game and I think it deserves to be beautiful. And the pieces it came with were kind of just like standard, you know, Euro wooden bits. So I, I actually glued together little pieces of rock and then made molds to make my own golems, which is a little extra. I don't think the average person is going to do that. You can also get like stickers and other upgrades to make the little uh, golem lumpens look more interesting. Um, I actually got the stickers that I put on the students uh, so they look better. And then I made glass tokens if you want to actually check out one of my other videos on making glass tokens. Uh, I made glass tokens to replace the wooden bits both because I thought they would be prettier and because one of the challenges in the game and its iconography is the the little dubers that you're sliding up on two of your tracks on your personal board were just colored discs. And I found a lot of people were having a hard time remembering, like, this one's the fist track, this one's the open book track. Even though the symbol is on the track itself, I found having the symbol on the token helped some. Uh, and then the resources themselves, I actually got some brass stamping blanks for the coins. I got some just uh, bricks for the clay pieces that were pretty cheap. Um, <clears throat> I actually replaced the uh, the gold bars with uh, the gold wooden bits with some ingots. And then I, I found somebody with a circuit cutter, circuit cricket, you know, the little like laser cutter thing that can like make anything uh, and had them actually make some little olive tokens out of uh, just plastic for me to laser cut the olive out of it. So I'm very pleased with all of those resources. It's a little above and beyond, but you should just know that the standard game comes with you know, wooden pieces and not like plastic golems and uh, cardboard, you know, punch board resources. Um, but yeah, that's golem. I, I really enjoy this game. I think it's going to 
be my go-to like really like heavy euro game uh for when i'm in that mood for a while uh which is why i invested a lot of time in upgrading my copy um but i would be curious to hear what your experience has been with this game uh drop me a note in the comments below until next time i'm amanda polk and i will talk to you later bye <laughs>